If you have been following my videos for the past few months, you know we have built bunch of sliders and carousels using GSAP and scroll trigger. But this time I decided to take on a new challenge, creating a slider using only vanilla JavaScript, no libraries or plugins. In this video, I'll show you how to create this amazing slider that moves on scroll, updates the scale of the images and card based on their position in the viewport. All without using the Intersection Observer API. We'll also add that parallax effect to the images by updating the scale differently compared to the cards. If you find this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. You can access the source code using Codetrick Pro, the link is in the description. Alright, let's dive right into the code. Let's kick things off by adding a simple navbar and a footer. For now, I'll just put some placeholder text inside them. Next up is the slider. I'll add a div with the class name card and place an image inside it. To create more slides, I'll replicate this card. For this video, we'll have 20 slides in total. I'll also update the images accordingly. And that's it for the HTML. Let's move on to styling now. Let's start with some global styles. First. We'll reset the margin, padding and box sizing for all elements. For the HTML and body, we'll set the width to 100 viewport width and the height to 1000 viewport height, giving us enough scroll space. We'll also define font family and set the background to black. Next for the images, we'll make sure they cover the entire card by setting the width and height to 100% and using the object fit property. We'll also add a smooth transition effect for the transform property. For the text, we'll use uppercase letters, set the font size to 13 pixels, the font width to 500 and the color to white. Now let's style the navbar and footer. We'll set their width to 100%, add some padding and use flexbox to align their content. Both will be fixed to the top and bottom of the viewport respectively. The slider itself will also be fixed to the top left corner. We'll give it a width of 500% to allow space for all cards and set the height to 100 viewport height. We'll also use flexbox to center the cards horizontally and vertically. Finally, let's style the cards. Each card will have a width of 400 pixels and a height of 500 pixels. We'll add a transition effect for smooth scaling. We'll also hide any overflow to let the images have parallax effect. That's it for the CSS. Now let's move on to the JavaScript. First, we need to select the slider and all the cards. We'll also define an easing factor for smooth transitions and set up variables to track the current and target positions. Here current x represents the current position of the slider and target x is the target position we want to move to. These variables will help us create a smooth scrolling effect. Next, we create a function to calculate the scale factor based on the card's position in the viewport. First, we calculate the quarter width by dividing the viewport width by 4. This helps us create 4 equal sections within the viewport, allowing us to apply different scaling factors based on the card's position within these sections. Next, we check the card's position. If the position is outside the viewport, we return a scale factor to 0, meaning the card is not visible and no scaling is applied. If the card's position is within the first quarter of the viewport, we use the love function which we'll define later to scale from 0 to 0.45. This creates a gradual scaling effect as the cards move into the view. For the second quarter, we scale from 0.45 to 1.5, increasing the size more dramatically and making the card stand out as it approaches the center of the viewport. In the third quarter, we reverse the scaling from 1.5 back to 0.45, creating a symmetrical effect that gradually reduces the size as the card moves away from the center. Finally, 
finally for the fourth quarter, we scale from 0.45 to 0, gradually reducing size to nothing as the card moves out of the viewport. Next, we create a function that updates the scales of the cards and their images based on their position in the viewport. First, we get the current width of the viewport using window.innerWidth function. This helps us determine how to scale the cards based on their position within the viewport. Next, we loop through each card using for each function. For each card, we get its bounding rectangle first. This gives us the card's position and dimensions relative to the viewport. We then calculate the center of the card by adding half of its width to its left position. This center position helps us determine how far the card is from the center of the viewport. Using the get scale factor function, we calculate the scale factor for the card based on its center position and the viewport width. This function adjusts the scale of the card to create the desired visual effect as it moves through the viewport. We also calculate a slightly larger scale factor for the images inside the cards by multiplying the card scale factor by 1.1. This creates a parallax effect where the image scales differently from the card. Finally, we apply the calculated scale factors to the card and its image using the style.transform property. This ensures that both the card and the image scale smoothly as they move through the viewport. By calling this function in our animation loop, we can dynamically update the scales of the cards and images based on their position, creating a visually engaging slider. Next, we'll define the lerf function for linear interpolation. This function helps us in creating smooth transitions between two values. Next, we define the update function, which handles the animation of our slider. In the update function, we use the lerf function to smoothly transition the current x position to the target x position using our defined easing factor. We then update the slider's position by setting its transform property to translate along the x-axis based on the current x variable. We'll also call the update scales function here to adjust the scales of the cards and images based on their new positions. Finally, we use request animation frame function to ensure that the update function is called repeatedly, creating a smooth animation loop. To make slider respond to scroll events, we add an event listener for the scroll event. When the user scrolls, this event listener calculates the maximum scrollable height and the current scroll position. It then calculates the scroll progress as a percentage of the maximum scrollable height. Using this scroll progress, we update the target X position to move the slider. Multiplying the scroll progress by minus 75 ensures that the slider moves to the left as we scroll down. Finally, we call the update function to start the animation loop. That's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.